get by It resides between my eyes Walked through the fire Came out better on the other side See lights like a peach If you find the same And right now I'm feeling like a hundred grand You are listening to Inspired Insider With your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise Live from the Sweet Snack Show I'm chewing grape uh, right now. Dr. Jeremy Weiss from the Sweet and Snack Show. It's actually delicious. It matches your shirt, Thank you. Tim. And we're here with Daryl Lee, a uh, liquor's ba- you know, Australian-based company. How old are you guys? Yeah, so Daryl Lee was founded in 1927, so we've been around for just over 90 years. Wow. What's the origins of the company? Yeah, so it started off as a small chocolate company and then sort of about 50 years ago they moved into licorice and we've been selling licorice now globally for about 15 years and in the US for about 12. So what's unique about this? Well, I guess the first licorice we made being a soft eating licorice was just slightly different to anywhere else in the world and partly it's to do with the clean green ingredients that we have in Australia. So we we use a lot of molasses and treacle in our black licorice. And then for these products, obviously there's no black ingredients in it, but it's just fruit based and no genetically modified ingredients and all natural flavors and colors. That's unique for a licorice though. Yeah, absolutely. What's in other, what's typical in other licorices? Well, I mean, if you look at products like Red Vines and Twizzler, they've just got a whole lot of different ingredients in it. Um, we've tried to really clean up the product, and we're really happy with how this has come out, both from a taste perspective and from a claims perspective. So what are you most excited about right now with the company, Tim? Well, I mean, for the U.S., the number one sugar confectionery product is the Twizzler product, and we think we've got an opportunity here to bring a product that's really on trend with all the health and wellness trends here, and, and we're really excited about this one. What are some of the best sellers? Because you guys have a bunch of different products. Yeah, so our red licorice in a seven ounce bag is our number one product, um, followed by black licorice. We also do a mixed bag, and then this is our first entry into the lay down set. Talk to me about how you guys innovate, right? Coming up with these, what does that look like behind the scenes? Yeah, so I'd like to say it was an organized process, but I mean, we, we take input from a lot of people. So we talk to a lot of consumers, we talk to a lot of customers. We've obviously all got our own ideas and we put all that in a pot and then probably once a quarter sit down and filter that down to what are the products that we want to take through stage one innovation, test those, taste those, work out the commercials, the manufacturing ability, and if it passes all of those things, then it gets to market like this. So what's some of the feedback, I'm curious, like from consumers, what were the, what was some of the feedback that shaped this product? Yeah, I mean, we've been selling licorice in America for 12 years, and we've always sold short, fat pieces of licorice, and Americans have traditionally always bought long, skinny pieces. So you know, when I do associate, if I'm buying like a really, and I associate um, high-quality licorice with Australian and the short, fat ones, though, I, I personally, that's how I associate it. Yeah, that's right, and we're certainly not changing those products. We just think to try and build a bridge between what Americans are buying today and what we're selling, we thought this was a unique opportunity to do that bridge. Yeah. So what else should people know about Daryl Lee? Well, I mean, in Australia, we're a broad-based confectionery company. We have a large chocolate business and a licorice business. In America, we're choosing to focus at the moment purely on our licorice products, and we think with these two products, we've got some great growth for the year ahead. How did you get involved with the company? Yes, yeah, so I've been involved with the company for the last five years. Um, my background is FMCG, so I came out of Coca-Cola before coming here. But I, I just like the opportunity to work in a business of this size because you can just do so much. Like if you're in a multi-billion dollar business, you're talking about getting a 1% or 2% decline or growth, whereas in this business we're growing at over 20 and it's just a lot of fun. What are some lessons you learned at Coca-Cola that you bring to Daryl Lee as CEO? Um, Yeah, that's a good question. I think in a bigger business, it's more around how you corral the troops. So you've got a sales force of thousands and it's how do you align those behind a goal. In a business like this, it's a much more agile business. But I think if you can take the best things that you learn in those businesses and apply them into a more agile business, you end up getting that balance between process, pragmatism and and progress. And between all of that, you you get more products out into the marketplace. So, Tim, what's the hardest part about being CEO? Uh, I think it's just nonstop. I feel like it's like the offensive line of football 
where you 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 basically get no credit, but uh, <laughs> you're blocking for the running back. I'm sorry, like I should do a rugby example of being from Australia, but uh, you know, you're behind the scenes. You take the fall, but maybe you get the credit too. But what's some tough, you know, tough parts about leading a company? Because it's not easy to get everyone moving in direction and and seeing the vision. Yeah, I'm, there's certainly challenges to it. I love working in a business of this size. I mean, we have an amazing team of people. We really do focus on trying to have a small, high-caliber team. Um, my job's obviously to work out the strategy for the business and provide clarity to the team on what is important and then try and deflect all the things that aren't important so that we just focus on the one, two or three things that really matter. Right. Where can people find this? And uh, tell us, uh, obviously, online where they can find it and offline. Yeah, so this is brand new, although Kroger has already accepted it, so it's rolling out into their stores right now. Target has got this in a test number of stores. Um, we've just launched on Amazon this week, so it's available there as well. Um, and there's a number of other people in the Northeast that have already taken it, and we're expecting to roll it out coast to coast in the next 12 months. And then what's uh, the website people can go to? Um, so www.dlea.com. And then last question, I'm interested about your opinion on retail versus e-commerce. E-commerce has come on the scene a lot. How do you uh, change strategy with the retail versus e-commerce? Because you guys are on Amazon and... Yeah. yeah, I don't think it's a versus. I think it's a complementary strategy. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, we don't really see that Amazon is going to replace bricks and mortar, but we think it's a beautiful channel for people to become aware of our products. Mm -hmm. um, people are actively searching for better for you options, and Amazon is, the, I think, the most searched place in America. So we just think it's a logical fit. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Check out the flavors, maybe Target, Kroger, other places. You know, strawberry and grape, delicious. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the sand. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand.